Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another uh, Kano Tryharding Modern. Today we'll be playing uh, Modern Mono Green Tron, and we have an interesting list here. This was sent to me by like five or six different people, and uh, a lot of people want me to play it, so I'm going to play it. Um, hey, Lotus. Hey, Toki. Hey, Elbow. Um, so some differences in this list. We've got uh, Golos, Tireless Pilgrim, Cascading Cataracts package to be able to cast stuff for free. We have Chancellor of the Annex, which is one of my favorite cards in the game. Um, it's very trolly. It helps slow the game down a bit. And uh, we have Chromatic Orrery, which is part of an infinite combo that this deck can perform. So if you play Chromatic Orrery, it's a big ramp spell, but also you can wish for Filigree Sages out of the side with Karn Great Creator and just go infinite and cast your whole deck um, as a combo. Other than that, it's just Tron. There's not too much to say about the sideboard other than there's some warping whales that are not wishboard stuff. And we're going to see what happens. I've not played a list like this. Um, so, you know, anything could happen at this point. Uh, this will probably be a shorter stream. I'm, I'm probably only going to do the one league because I, um, I have a bunch of stuff that I have to do today and I'm not feeling the greatest. I got, um, I'm just tired. There's, I'm not like sick or anything like that. I'm just tired. Uh, so we're going to try and, you know, get a league in, see what happens. Thanks, Tarek. All right. I do want to play first. Uh, Mine Tower, or Mine Power Plant Map and Chancellor seems really good. Hey, IJC, how's it going? So we will reveal Chancellor. Happy birth, or let's see, Mixum, thank you for resubscribing. It's not my birthday. Um, it's not my birthday, IJC. Oh my gosh. Uh, let's start with mine into map. Pass the turn. Uh, what dice factory deck? It is coming soon, yes. I will probably not have a stream on my actual birthday, but I will have a stream the day after, which is the Moto release of New Capenna. So, uh, Albo, thank you for resubscribing. I really appreciate that. Uh, play a power plant, pass the turn. Okay, opponent bolts into Chancellor. We don't take any damage. Opponent untaps. They play Windswept Teeth. No worries, D-Slayer. Let's go get Tower. Uh, we draw Chromatic Sphere. Play Tower. Play Karn. Nuke Stomping Ground. Pass the turn. <laughs> Mix him. Yeah, no, it's just... Um, so, with the, the whole... I have no idea what I'm playing against, by the way. It's probably a Blood Moon deck. So I, I'm probably going to need these forces. <laughs> uh, this is just, like... Complete speculation. Um, I'm going to cut two Chancellor, bring in two Force, and we'll try it like that. Um, so the reason that I'm not... I, normally what I would do is I would stream on my birthday, and then I would stream the next day, which is the Capenna release, the 27th and 28th of April. But uh, I'm moving the 1st of May, <laughs> and so like I'm just going to condense those. We're going to do the new Capenna release. It'll be a lot of fun. And then after that, I will be moving across the country, so... And practically across the continent. Um, okay, we can keep this. I'm going to put back mine. Uh, this is a list that Lotus sent me and is very similar to... Like, uh, I don't know if this originated from Lotus or not, but there were several people that actually sent me a list like this or very similar to it, so... Fast Lose Tron... I guess we'll see. Opponent starts stomping ground into wooded foothills. We untap. Draw Golos. Play a mine. Um, yeah, I'm going to cycle for green here. Okay, we draw another mine. Pass the turn. We're slowly making our way to Golos. Well, there's nothing wrong with playing ley lines or chancellors in a deck like this, right? Like, chancellor protects map, basically, is its intended function. So, play power plant, play map. Pass the turn. But you still kept it 61 cards, Black Lotus? I don't believe you. Okay, opponent bolts our face and does nothing. I have no idea what my opponent's playing. But they appear to be losing to... Uh, well, we drew Cascading Cataract. <laughs> um, play Tower. Play Chromatic Orrery. Play Golos. Golos for... I guess Sanctum or Yavi Maya? Let's go with Sanctum. I could actually get another tower. Hang on. Because um, I can play Cataracts next turn and play Golos and then activate Golos, which would be pretty sick. Let's just go for loads of mana. Pass the turn. Waited weeks to catch me online. <laughs> Thanks, uh, IJC. Um, 
Can you explain what the non-trust stuff is supposed to do there? Uh, Chromatic Orrery is just an infinite combo piece. And that was uh, sort of the intent, IJC. Um, uh, a lot of my content is supposed to be instructive, anyway. I may spend mana as though it were mana of any color. So I can just... I should be able to activate Golos, right? Okay, yes, yes I can. That's fine. Can we undo this? Okay. All right. Um, Planers is mine. And yes, yes, it does a lot of stuff. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, actually, hang on. Just go one, two, tap for five, activate Golos. So red, black, green, blue, white, anything, anything. Activate Golos. Uh, cast Ancient Stirrings. We'll take a car and liberated. Rest to the bottom. Cast an expedition map. Um, I can't cast force and play Karn, so we're just gonna wait. That's pretty good. Emotional damage punts are real. Uh, it's similar. This is the list that Lotus changed slightly, but it's based on that list, D Slayer. And like three other people sent me that list, by the way, so y'all had the the hive mind working on it. Opponent is going to stomp Golos, that's fine, we don't care. Stomp and bolt to kill him. All right, opponent passes. Let's go ahead and force to kill Blood Moon. Okay, untap. We draw a Chromatic Star. So let's go ahead and sack map. Get Sanctum. Play Sanctum. Play Karn. Sack Sanctum. Get Ulamog. Resolve Karn. Nuke a land. Uh, play Ulamog. Nuke two lands. And finish with a Chromatic Star. Pass the turn. Colorless Ponza. <laughs> I mean, kind of. It's Tron. It's a green Tron. Um, fair enough. I have I have a box I want to do a pack opening with. I just don't have a setup. I tried um, I tried to do a pack opening for Strixhaven, but I basically couldn't use the footage. It was really bad. Um, oh, what cards should be cut out of this list? Uh, it probably should only have 18 land. It doesn't need 19. So, like, really, it probably doesn't need Besiege you. It doesn't need Besiege you, or it doesn't need Yavi Maya. Take your pick. I think my opponent is typing a message. I, they're just sitting there waiting. Only one forest. Let me look at this list. Uh, you can cut Besiege you, or you can cut Yavi Maya. Two forests is fine. It doesn't need 19 land. It only needs 18. Are you looking for equipment for streaming or software? No, not really. Um, I don't have a space. Um, I don't have a camera I can use for portable filming and the space that I'm, I'm currently working out of, which I will be moving away from the first of next month is not conducive to like tabletop recording because the lighting is terrible and I don't have a way to improve it. I've, I've maxed out like the circuit down here with just what's plugged in for my uh, stream setup. There's only one plug and only one circuit. So I've got a, um, as soon as I move and I have an actual recording space, that's like well lit i will actually do probably some some magic pack cracking and stuff like that because a lot of people want to see that stuff and i don't mind doing it because i think it's fun will the scene change a lot after i move uh i mean the porter cam what you can see on the porter cam will change his surroundings anyway but um in terms of like what my stream setup looks like not much is going to change how much can your circuits take that you can't install a 50 watt led uh it that's not sufficient um, I have used varieties of LED lighting, and because of the particular way that this space deals with light, either the glare on the cards is too much that you can't read them, or it's too dark to see. Like, there's no in-between, and I experimented for hours. So, it, it's just gonna have to, it's just gonna have to wait till I move. Um, alright, round two. No worries, thank you. Uh, this hand... Actually, is not that bad, but we can, we're going to mulligan that. We can do better. We can definitely do better than this. We'll be going to five. Uh, we'll be going to four. We'll be going to three. Okay. We will keep three. We are putting back Karn, Chromatic Sphere, Chancellor, Chancellor. Let's rock. <laughs> you hear the safest way to put to run a lot of heavy electricity is to put everything on a power strip and run it through a, a long extension cord? Yeah, no kidding, right? Um... No, actually, like, uh, the problem is it's only a 15-amp circuit in the basement. Uh, and I think... I, I did the math one time, and I couldn't... 
there were several things I wanted to have, and I, I, I couldn't do any single one of them. And so, like, a real decent lighting with, like, diffuse boxes and stuff, I, there's not enough space. Because I'm not, I'm on the same circuit as, uh, oh, shoot. I needed to map for tower there, and I was talking. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and concede. We can't beat Karn with this hand. This deck is, yeah, this deck is Tron. There's a combo between Chromatic Orrery and Filigree Sages in the sideboard. So you just wish for Filigree Sages and you can draw your whole deck and play everything. Um, but really what this lets you do is cast like your Chancellors and kind of like lets you activate Golos and stuff. We, we did a bunch of fun stuff with it in game one and actually won because of it. So Force of Vigors are coming in. Uh, I actually want Warping Whale in this matchup because Worm Coil is bad. Um, trying to think of what else is not going to be great here. I'm probably not going to need the basic land, so I'm actually going to drop a Forest because it's not like they're playing Blood Moon, and I'm probably not going to get Ghost Quartered. Um, Chancellor actually does a lot here if we keep it in our opener. Kozilek is not that great in this matchup, so I feel fine dropping Kozilek. Uh, Ugin does not do a lot, but I also don't want to be minimally threat dense. Uh, Southern Wisconsin area. Oh, I'm sure I have a few. Actually, never mind. Um, I think I'm going to cut one Chancellor just because it's not like on the primary game plan that much. It is useful, but like I can't dilute the deck too much. I think two Force of Vigors is fine because it's not actually that important. And I have to play 61 cards. It's cold there. I'm from there, I know. Okay, we'll play first. Sure, we'll keep this. As long as we can hit a mine off Ancient Stirrings, we're fine. If opponent is willing to use a Force of Vigor on our Chromatic Sphere, then we're sad, but... I could actually play around that if I played Chromatic Sphere turn two. Okay, opponent plays hers as mine. They play Chromatic Star. I could force the star, not going to. We untap, we draw Expedition Map. So, Sac Sphere for green. Play Tower, Sylvan Scrying. Let's go get Urza's Mine, the one we're missing. Pass the turn. There was some notion that with that draw I could force that star on my opponent's upkeep. But if this is an Ancient Stirrings play, odds are Karn by himself is going to be enough. Opponent gets an Expedition map. That I will actually force. Okay, we untap. Draw an Ugin. Play it. I did it again! What's wrong with me today? Play a map. Pass the turn. Oh my goodness, something is horribly wrong with me today. And it's that I'm not feeling good. <laughs> well, at least opponent cycled a bunch of stars and missed a land drop. Ultimately, we should be fine. Uh, I will get Sanctum. I just have to remember to play Mine this turn. Thankfully, that didn't matter. Uh, play Karn. <laughs> it's so bad. All right, we did it! <laughs> oh, hang on. Round win. One match win, one match loss. Um, yeah, run it back. We should be fine. It's very difficult to actually play this game and um, try and interact with stream. So I, I, tend, I tend to, I think in the future, I'm going to play decks that I'm not, like, absolutely trying to try hard with. Tron's a little bit different, because in theory I should be able to autopilot with it, but... Uh, this hand is tempting. Uh, it's kind of slow, though. If I keep this hand, I think I have to put back an Ancient Stirrings, and I will have to play a Green Land... So I'm going to go to five. Okay, yeah. This hand just doesn't do anything. But going to four, unless it's like Tron Threat, is, this is better. So we're going to put back Sanctum and a Sphere. I think if my opponent leads map, I would force map. There's some notion that maybe I should force star, but it does draw them a card. Yeah, let's, let's not do that. Redundant Mine is not what we wanted to see. Okay, opponent untaps. Okay. This is Sylvan Scrying. I'm extra sad. Okay, Ancient Stirrings. Expedition map. Okay, opponent plays Tower and Map. Um, nice. Um, so I have to either give up on this Ancient Stirrings to take my opponent off of Tron. I actually think I have to do that. Um, because at no other point can I stop my opponent from cracking map. So this sucks. Okay, Sylvan Scrying is good. Sack for green. We draw Karn. So play another mine. Sylvan Scrying for, I guess, Power Plant. Pass the turn. Opponent just has Tron. Let's Tron into Worm Coil, which we can beat. 
potentially. Play power plant. If we draw a tower... Okay, I can't... I cannot beat an Ulamog. Okay, it's a Ballista. Oh, we drew an Ancient Stirrings. Uh, I'm not sure what I can Ancient Stirrings into that would actually win, though. Mmm, yeah, none of that beats my opponent. Because even if I Warping Whale to block, they can just... Uh, they can kill it before I block, and then they can deal enough damage to kill me, uh, just with Ballista. Uh, I can't play Ugin. Uh, Tower, I can't play because I had to play a Forest to do this. Yep. All right. We're one and one. Moving on to round three. I don't remember. Did I throw game one? Exclamation point deck. I'll get you a list. No problem. What do I think about the Pro Tour returning? I'm kind of indifferent. Um, I don't I don't have a really strong opinion one way or the other. Uh, it's going all right. I'm kind of tired today. Still have a lot I have to do, so this is probably going to be a shorter stream. But figured I'd at least get through a league, see how long that took, and then decide. I am very proud of the uh, stupid meme video I made yesterday <laughs> that I uploaded to YouTube. Uh, I watched that ten times, and I think it still made me laugh. So, it seems reasonable, D-Slayer. All right, round three, here we go. Great and accurate. I know, right? Big in-person events coming back? Yeah. Yeah, it'll be good. Okay, this hand is not keepable. Neither is this one. It's slow. Like, it's really slow, but... I think we could keep a worse hand. Uh, I'm gonna go to four. Okay, yeah. You know what? We'll, we'll keep four. So we'll put back Blast Zone, Golos, Chancellor. Okay. Opponent leads on a mountain, suspends Rift Bolt. So this is probably Burn. Lead on Mine, play Star, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Rift Bolt coming off, suspend. Shoots us for three. Shocks a Sacred Foundry. Uh, shoots us for three again. And shoots us for three. We untap. We draw Karn, Great Creator, Cycle for Green. Hey, we hit a Sylvan Scrying, perfect. Let's go get a tower. Pass the turn. Okay, opponent plays a Swift Spear and a Sunbaked Canyon. They cycle Sunbaked Canyon immediately. Okay, so what that's going to tell me to do here is play Great Creator. And we are going to go get Trinisphere. Pass the turn. Because this means at most my opponent can cast one burn spell. Yeah, make sure you play the right land. No kidding. Something's wrong with me today. And I think it's... Um, I haven't really played Magic this week, like at all. I've just been doing too much other stuff. Opponent hard casts another Swift Spear. Hey, this isn't even my list. This is someone else's list. Okay, let's see. What next? Um, bridge isn't that useful. Ballista could kill both of my opponent's creatures. Um, or I can play Karn Liberated, just take them off of a land. Oh, I can play Sundering Titan. What am I saying? Play Abimaya. Wish. Get Sundering Titan. Play Sundering Titan. Get rid of a Forest, Mountain, and Plains. Pass the turn. So opponent can no longer cast spells unless they running top deck three lands. How did he blow up three lands? All right. I've not seen burn, so let's let's go ahead and look at uh, a recent burn list. Let's see, Boros burn. Out of the sideboard, they're going to have Skullcrack, Smash to Smithereens, Deflecting Palm. Okay. Um, nothing I really need to worry about having Force of Vigor for. I think I want Warping Whale. And I might be able to counter a Sorcery or maybe make a Blocker. Uh, it's not that it's changed. It's that there's like nine different versions you can run that are approximately the same deck. I just wanted to see if there is a like a specific sideboard card I might have to worry about. I guess Roiling Vortex is one of them, but um, I'm not going to worry too much about Roiling Vortex because like my top end can deal with it. I'm going to drop Kozilek. 
Karn is actually not that great versus burn generally. Karn liberated, so I'm going to cut two Karns and we're going to try it like this. Oh wait, I'm going to cut one Karn because this is a 61 card deck. Okay. Um, we can definitely do better. So we're going to mulligan. This is better. We're going to keep this and I'm going to put back Besiege you. Let's see what our opponent does. They play an Inspiring Vantage. They play a Goblin Guide. All right. Draw me a mine, Goblin Guide. Undo that mulligan for me. Thank you. Well, we drew another tower, which is not a mine. Play a power plant. And I think to play around Smash to Smithereens, I'm not going to play out Sphere. Okay. Opponent plays a Sacred Foundry untapped. They attack us for two. We reveal a Chromatic Sphere off the top of our deck. We take two. Go to 16. Get Skewered. And get Skewered again. Okay, so we draw the Chromatic Sphere, play Tower, play Sphere, Sack Sphere for green, we draw Blast Zone, Ancient Stirrings, we find a Mine, why is this, oh, it's because of Battle of Wits, uh, we take Mine, okay, rest to the bottom, pass the turn, opponent untaps, they play a Swift Sphere, they attack us for three, we draw Yavi Maya, go down to seven, untap. We draw another Golos. So play Mine. Now I think the correct choice is to play Worm Coil Engine here, but if they've got Smash or they've got Path specifically, we're going to be in for a world of hurt. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's try it. Play the Sphere 2. Pass the turn. Okay, opponent does have Path. Get a Forest. Um, one Bolt kills us, and there it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, run it back. I think we I think we stay set up the same way. I'd like to play first. Uh, mine, power plant, tower, Karn. I'm not going to say no to natural Tron. Here, I'll put, I'll put all the arts in order. So you can see the full panorama right there in my hand. Okay, play mine. Pass the turn. The only way this hand would have gotten better is if I had like a Chancellor instead of an Ancient Stirrings. Okay, opponent leads on Ramanop Ruins into a Goblin Guide. Guide gonna draw us a tower. Well, play the Power Plant, pass the turn. They know we've got Tron. Okay, opponent plays a Fiery Islet. Bolts us. Suspends Rift Bolt. Hits us for two, we reveal Warping Wheel. Um, I could play Golos and I could counter that uh, Rift Bolt with Warping Wheel. That would preserve some life total. Otherwise, I could play Karn, down tick on a land. I have all of the gas I'm going to need, basically. I could play Karn, kill Goblin Guide. I think, I think the Golos line is a little bit better. To play Tower, play Golos. We'll go and get... Um, yeah, let's go get Cataract. Pass the turn. Okay. Rift Bolt coming off suspend. They're going to target us. Now let's go ahead and counter that. Okay. I'm expecting my opponent to like use a path. If they play like guide path or swift spear path or something like that, um, then we can Ugin and wipe the board. Okay, we reveal Chromatic Orrery. Yeah, Phoenix, you know me. I don't try to spike 100% of the time. And it is. It doesn't change the fact that it's extremely bo broken. But uh, Living End is also incredibly boring for me to play. So opponent can waste a bolt to kill Golos, and they probably should if they don't have a path. Okay. They play Wooded Foothills. And they skewer us. So they're just going hard trying to kill us. Which is probably what they should be doing, considering their burn. We untap, we draw chromatic orrery. Um I'm gonna go ahead and just add five green. Because if I draw a Karn, uh, I wanna play Yavi Maya basically, I think. Yeah, let's ancient stirrings. Okay, there's Karn Great Creator, which is what I was looking for. 
Okay, rest to the bottom. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and, and go the Trinisphere route. Okay, opponent can only play one spell next turn. And we do have Yavi Maya uh, into Sundering Titan. So we can take out two lands that way. We can take out three lands that way. But opponent can still only cast one spell this turn. So their best their best line is Path Golos Attack Karn. Or like Smash Golos Attack Karn, I think. They Skull Crack Karn. Okay. We untap. We draw Forest. So we have 4, 10, 11 mana. I can go up to 12. I can... Uh, not Thoughtseer. Thank you for following. Appreciate that. Uh, Pain Panda Entertainment. Thank you for following. I think what I'm going to do is play Chromatic Orrery and then play Karn. Actually, I'm going to play Ugin because... No. I want to play Karn. Um, and the reason I want to play Karn is because I want to attack my opponent's mana base. Because if they can't double spell, they can't beat me. Um, if they have green, they can have green-based uh, artifact removal, which means I don't need, I don't want to play Abimaya this turn, and I do want to take out um, Stomping Ground rather than the Sack Land. Because if they Sack to draw something, it doesn't matter, because then they can't cast any spells. And if they don't Bolt Karn to kill him, we take out a land and they can no longer cast spells. Alternatively, they can, if they have Path, Path Golos, and then attack Karn to take him to one, but then we uptick him. Okay, opponent has a Lightning Helix for Karn. We untap with a truly immense amount of mana. That's actually hilarious. Play Chancellor. <laughs> and then play Ukin. <laughs> oh man, Kill Guide. Go to combat. Attack with Golos. Now they have to pay three and a force spike for every spell they cast. And we got them. So we're two and one. That was fun. <laughs> it's, it's very rude. Very rude way to win the game, but it worked. All right. Round four. Uh, something that 5 owed and a bunch of people wanted me to play. I think with a minor change by, uh, by Lotus here in chat. Uh, I will be keeping this. So play mine, play map. Pass the turn. Yeah, it sure seems that way. Opponent starts Verdant Catacombs Fetch, Basic Forest, and two birds. This is either Heliod Company or Yogmoth. We draw a star, play a tower, pass the turn. Okay, it's Yogmoth. Grist the Hunger Tide, sure. Opponent gonna uptick, make an insect. Milling Yavi Maya. Let's go get Power Plant. We untap, we draw Yavi Maya, play Power Plant, play Karn, nuke Grist, pass the turn. Because Grist can bone splinters a, a Planeswalker or Spark Harvest. Opponent plays Ignoble Hierarch, Ignoble Hierarch, so their plan is to attack and kill Karn with Exalted Triggers. They do have a Blood Artist. Okay, so Karn down. Ugin off the top one time. Okay. So, play Tower, play Sphere, Sack Sphere for green, we draw Karn Great Creator, um, so if I wish with Karn Great Creator, uh, Ensnaring Bridge doesn't really do anything, Oblivion Stone we won't have enough mana for, uh, Chalice doesn't really do anything either, I guess it's Ballista? Yeah, I think that's the case, go ahead and wish. And we will take Walking Ballista. Play Walking Ballista on two, play Star. Um, and I'm gonna ping a Ignoble Hierarch. Because I don't want them to just be able to swing birds double exalted trigger and, and, and have access to all that mana. They need two undying creatures and a yog and and a yogmoth to um, actually kill us. So here's a cord, probably for a yogmoth. Well, it's it's a cord for their best creature, is what it is. Okay, cord X four. So I'm just gonna ping. Oh, if I ping the insect token, they could get um, uh, what's it called? Strangle Root Geist and just attack and kill Karn. <laughs> so we have to let this resolve. As bad of an idea as this is. Okay, it's a Yogmoth. 
opponent goes to combat. So we ping the insect. They just sack it, draw a card. But I mean, I'm going to wish for probably Oblivion Stone, although they, they just redraw like a whole ton of stuff if I do. It really depends on what we top deck. An opponent's going to get to reload their hand. Like best, best top deck is like Ugin, because we play Ugin, we minus four him, they sack their whole board, and then we get something to deal with their mana. Can we draw Karn, Great Creator? Um, so I could wish for, like, Sundering Titan, take out Dryad Arbor in a Swamp. Um, Oblivion Stone's probably still our best bet. Let's get a redraw and see what we draw. Just a land. Okay. So wish with Karn, Great Creator. Get an Oblivion Stone. Play Oblivion Stone. Blow up the world. This does not kill Dryad Arbor, by the way. But opponent sacks Dryad Arbor. So we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Players is mine. Play Karn, great creator. Wish. And we will get Sundering Titan. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps, plays a Verdant Catacombs. So they probably have a Collected Company. I guess maybe they don't play Collected Company. I don't actually know. Okay, they fetch Verdant Catacombs. They get a Forest. They play a Wall of Roots. Strangle Root Geist. Okay, so they attack Karn down to one. We draw Ancient Stirrings. So, play Yavi Maya. Ancient Stirrings. Um, let's see. I have 12 mana, which is not quite enough to play Golos and Sundering Titan in the same turn. But I will still take Golos here. Rest of the bottom. Play Sundering Titan. And we will destroy Twilight Mire and Swamp. Take them off of black mana. Uptick Karn. Pass the turn. Besiege you does give you the option of, like, if my opponent had done nothing there, I could have, like, played Yavi Maya, played Sundering Titan, and besiege you Sundering Titan to get them to zero permanence. So, generally, if your opponent's playing a two color deck, taking them off of a color, especially double color, if they're playing things like Twilight Mire, is pretty important. Okay. Put a Cracks Verdant Catacombs. Gets an Overgrown Tomb. This is probably a Eldritch Evolution. Because that would let them kill Karn with, like, the Stringle Root Geist that comes back. And, um... Then they could get Reclamation Sage and force us to get rid of Sundering Titan. Oh, I guess you can only hit uh, Permanence Opponent's Control, right? Uh, Artifact, Enchantment, or Non-Basic Land. Okay. So they can Bone Splinters to kill the Sundering Titan. Sacking Strangle Root Geist. And they're just going to kill Karn. They're leaving us with a 7-10, sure. We untap, we draw Ugin, and that's game over. Because we play Ugin. Minus 3 Ugin. Alright. It's a game win. So out of the sideboard, they're going to have Collector Oof, uh, Outland Liberator, Necromentia, which is a huge problem. Um, a little bit less so because we have mana producing artifacts, but I do want Warping Whale both for the Exile and the Sorcery Counter bit. Uh, question is, what do I drop? And it's probably Karn Liberated. <laughs> it's probably a Karn Liberated and a uh, Kozilek, because Kozilek's really bad here. Uh, yeah, we don't cut Chancellor. Unless you're asking me why I'm playing it, in which case you'll have to find the person that originally built the deck. But it seems to be pretty good. Uh, Natural Tron into Ugin. We'll keep. The only way this doesn't work is a turn 2 or turn 3 Necromantia. Opponent did mulligan to 6. They start on Overgrown Tomb into Ignoble Hierarch. Okay. Play a Mine, play a Star, pass the turn. Okay, opponent plays a Wall of Roots. Into a young wolf. 
we draw a power plant. Um, I mean, if I'm going to get Necromentia, I kind of would rather have two zombie tokens rather than one. So maybe I play the tower here. But I also probably need the lands. Let's get a redraw and see what we find. Chromatic Orrery. Okay, play a tower. Yeah, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to needlessly besiege you here. There's some notion that, like, maybe I should because it could prevent them from drawing a land, which maybe they really need. Um, and if I, if they did get, like, a swamp, it would show me. Okay, Magus of the Moon. We take two. We draw a Blast Zone. Play Power Plant. Pass the turn. Kind of depends on how fast they're going to be able to do anything. So they do have two mana sources that aren't red, and they're hitting us for three a turn currently. If we make it to enough mana, like, because this is not a particularly fast clock, we can just Ugin and win the game. And we do have a Chromatic Orrery. If we draw a basic forest, we can besiege you something if we have to. Um, but at this point, I would not do that because it would fix my opponent's mana. I'm also really glad I didn't just needlessly besiege you because they would have gotten a basic forest or a basic swamp or whatever makes their mana better or best. Okay, they play birds. They hit us for three. We untap and draw a sphere. So play a sphere. Cycle for green. Play a sphere. Cycle for green. Play a sphere. Play a power plant. Pass the turn. Um, if we could draw a worm coil engine, that'd be pretty great. We could draw a Golos, that would also be great. Four mana, it's looking like Yogmoth. Okay, if they have a second Young Wolf, we're probably just dead. They hit us for three. Okay, we go to 12. Okay. So, a Golos... A Karn Great Creator, I think, is actually the best draw. Golos is the second best, and third best would be Worm Coil Engine. Okay, we draw a star. So cycle for green, we draw Golos. So I guess we just play Golos, because I'm not sure what else we could play that's good. Um... I guess Cascading Cataracts. It doesn't really matter. Pass the turn. So now the question is, can my opponent get a second Undying Creature and a Blood Artist onto the battlefield before we can play an Ugin? And the answer is probably yes, but, you know, man can dream. Wall of Roots. It's looking like... Okay, Eldritch Evolution. I was thinking Cord. They get a Grist. They're going to Bone Splinters to kill Golos. It's interesting. I'm surprised they didn't just try and go for, like, the combo kill. They attack us for six. We go to six. We draw another Golos. So I have seven mana. We can play an Orrery. We can play Golos off of Orrery. Uh, we don't need a basic forest. Let's just get a, another tower, I guess. Pass the turn. And if they have an answer for Golos or just a little bit of extra damage, we're dead. And if they don't, we've got them. Okay, Strangle Root Geist is exactly enough damage to kill us. Because it technically does not matter what I block here. We still take six. Okay, that's a match loss. All right. Um... Force of Vigor doesn't help us. We know we're going to have to be dealing with Magus, and we don't really have any way to set up to deal with Magus. We're just going to run it back as is and see what happens. Okay. I would like to play first. Um, this is a mulligan. This is not a mulligan. This is actually pretty good. So I'm going to put back the redundant tower here. Opponent mulligans to five cards. We're going to reveal Chancellor. Then we're going to play Power Plant into Sphere. Pass the turn. Chancellor should at least slow him down. And if they keep another one lander with only one one mana dork, then uh, they'll be in trouble. But Okay. Uh, we draw an Ugin, so play Tower. Cycle for green. We draw Blast Zone. Play 
Play Sphere. Pass the turn. I guess I could cycle there, maybe hitting an Ancient Stirrings, but it's pretty low. Okay, opponent untaps. They draw. They play a Blooming Marsh. They Thought Seize. Chancellor of the Annex Prox. They pay one. Okay, so they take a look at what we got going on. I guess in that general scenario, it was better to leave Sphere uncracked, so I think I accidentally punted into the right line. We drew mine, so I mean, play mine. Cycle for green. Okay. Pass the turn. Opponent plays Verdant Catacombs. Fetches. Gets a forest. Triple green. Strangle Root Geist. Birds. Hits us for two. We draw Sphere. Okay, let's try that again. Sphere. Cycle for green. Chancellor. <laughs> Play Blast Zone. Um, Do I want to blow up the birds? I actually think I do. Blow up the birds. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Okay, it's probably an Eldritch Evolution. Or it's a young wolf. Okay, Ugin off the top one time. Aw, oh, we get besieged. Get a forest. Opponent's gonna hit us for two. Okay, we untap. We draw Worm Coil, a turn too late. I'm gonna play out besiege you at this point. Pass the turn, because odds are we're gonna cast this Worm Coil just by land volume, not by um, Tron specifically, although Tron off the top would be great here. Ancient Stirrings, get a tower, rest of the bottom, play tower, play Worm Coil, pass the turn. We did dump a Chromatic Orrery to the bottom. We have Yawgmoth, so they can draw infinite cards, um, but I don't think they can kill us this turn. Oh, we're playing Tron Jakar Umbra. How's it going? Good to see you. It's Tron with Chancellor of the Annex in it. So opponent can draw infinite cards. They can play one land because they haven't yet. Um, it's an Urborg. Thoughtseize, the Chancellor Tron. Uh, we top deck Ugin and it's game over. Like, we top deck Great Creator, I think that does it too. Like, mm, Karn Liberated I don't think does it. But Karn Liberated is a pretty good top deck here. So play Karn, nuke Yawgmoth, because we don't want them to be able to block and then sack. We want to be able to gain the life, or we want to be able to not have to attack anyway. So they're probably going to just try and redraw into a Yawgmoth, but I can't really stop them. So if they have land Yawgmoth Cord, then we lose, or land Yawgmoth, um, land Yawgmoth Blood Artist, I mean. Um, nah, there's no reason to attack. I mean, there's Chromatic Orrery and there's Golos, so it's just those those things all go together, basically. Well, opponent elected to stop drawing, so they've probably got it. Uh, Eldritch Evolution would, in fact, be it. Yep, so we're dead. Yeah, so like in this scenario, obviously the Chancellor's being anything else would have mattered more. Um, just because... If they had been a Karn, or if they had been a an Ugin, or an Eldrazi, probably would have mattered enough. The problem is, like, when, you, when you're evaluating that, I don't know that they're necessarily strictly worse. The problem is we drew three of a four of that we didn't want. But also the problem is, in this version of the deck's construction, like, Tron is a deck where, like, all of the cards do the same thing. And Chancellor can help with some matchups that, like, otherwise Tron would be unable to beat. So, like, hyper-fast combo, if you delay him a turn, like, you might be able to start stone raining him. Like, that kind of stuff. Um, and Chancellor did help in this matchup versus our opponent, because it delayed them a turn on casting Thoughtseize. But is that better than just Tron's natural game plan? That kind of remains to be seen. But if you want to play something fun... I would definitely argue this version of the deck is fun. 
because we had a lot of fun with like chromatic orrery and doing a bunch of shenanigans in the first round that we played so um but unfortunately we are dead great creator was on top so all right that's a round loss moving on to round five All right, um, this is a turn four Tron on the draw. I think we can do better simply because we have so many mulligans to find something better, especially uh, something that's on the draw. This is not a powerful hand on the draw. Uh, well, that's not it. Uh, that's almost it. All right, we'll keep five of these. We'll put back a power plant and a Golos. We have two draws to find any Tron land that isn't Power Plant, and then we can tutor for the third one. Okay, opponent starts Bobble himself into Misty Rainforest. We draw Chancellor, which is a terrible top deck. Play Sphere, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. I imagine this is like a Teamer Delirium deck. Okay, there's a Steam Vents. I mean, it could just be like Merktide. Okay. So they're leaving up Spell Pierce. Sack Sphere for green. Play our other power plant. Scrying. They should Spell Pierce this. Okay. Get Nurse is mine. So they're saving Spell Pierce. I think that's incorrect. Because when we're delayed by a turn, now if we assemble Tron and they do have a Spell Pierce and their intent is to Spell Pierce a threat, if it's Karn, we can pay for it. Like... Not 100% sure. Opponent exiles a tower off the top of our deck, which is a little bit disheartening. Would have liked to have drawn a tower. Okay, expressive iteration. Jakar Umbra, thank you for resubscribing. Really appreciate it. You're a wonderful human being. They play a Misty. We untap. We draw a Karn Great Creator. So play Star. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They go to combat, they hit us for two, they exile Chancellor of the Annex, play Dragon's Rage Channeler, and pass. We untap, we draw on Urza's as mine, <laughs> Sack Star for green, mm, Ancient Stirrings? They gotta counter this. No? You're not gonna counter that? Uh, take Chromatic Sphere, because we didn't find a tower. Uh, Play Sphere. Sack Sphere for green. Draw Karn Liberated, play Mine, pass the turn. Well, if we top deck a tower, that's 11 mana. So we could play Karn alongside Karn. That'd be pretty cool. Opponent untaps. They attack us for three. We'll go to 13. Exile Blast Zone. That's also something we wouldn't have uh, minded getting. From this position, it'd be pretty good. We untap. We draw a star. Play star. Karn, great creator by himself, is, is not enough. Okay, let's chain stars together, and I hope we draw, like, a tower. I, I don't know. Okay, pass the turn. I guess we just got really unlucky with opponent exiling what appears to be the only tower in our deck. <laughs> it's just... Um, looks like Tron's consistency is compromised with his build. Like, the deck is a little bit less consistent, but it, it's not, like, a big deal. It really isn't. Um, like I said, I don't think playing Chancellor is the right thing to do. I think it can allow you to beat certain decks, but, like, 99 times out of 100, this is better off being, like, another threat of some kind, whether it's a Worm Coil engine or, you know, whatever else. But, like, this is not, in any circumstance... This is one of the flex slots, so this is not like it's taking the place of a sphere or a star. Like, both games where we've had it, it's just been bad beats. Hi, Waden MTG, how's it going? We draw an expedition map. So we play an expedition map. Let's go get a tower. Uh, then we play it and lose, because opponent has eight damage on board. But we found it! <laughs> just on turn six. Um, okay, so versus our opponent's deck, Warping Whale, Force of Vigor coming in. Um... We're here to play Chancellor, so I'm going to drop Kozilek, and I'm going to drop, I think, ooh, you know what, I actually don't know. I'm going to cut a Golos. Karn is not as good here. I'm going to trim to three Karns. I'm only going to play two Forces. And 
Yeah, we'll cut an orrery. Try it like this. Just cut two Chancellor? No. I'll play first. Um, well, we have Stirrings on turn two. We do have a Karn Great Creator. This hand's actually pretty good versus like a Blood Moon. And we have a Chancellor, so why not? Keep Reveal Chancellor. Play Tower, play Star. Pass the turn. Opponent probably is just going to cast a Cantrip. Like, <laughs> just be like, all right, you countered Cantrip. You never know. Okay, opponent does nothing. We untap. We draw Ancient Stirrings. So, Crack Star for green. Draw Ancient Stirrings. Ancient Stirrings. Uh, we'll take Urza's Mine, because it's a Tron land. Play Urza's Mine. Pass the turn. I'm not going to, like, I could play Forest and I could cast another Ancient Stirrings here, but, like, odds are what I should be doing is trying to top deck the last Tron piece. Okay, opponent plays Misty. We untap. We draw Chromatic Star. Play Star. Cycle for green. Play Forest and Sylvan Scrying. If they have a counter spell, they'll use it here. Ancient Stirrings is stronger next turn because we can Ancient Stirrings and then have Tron. So because my opponent let this go, this tells me they probably got Blood Moon. So Mind Tower, we need Power Plant. Take Power Plant. Pass the turn. Could have could have Sylvan Scrying for Besiju to deal with a Blood Moon. But I'm going to cast Karn next turn, and Golos only costs 5 mana. So there's the basic island. There's another basic island, so here comes the Blood Moon. There it is. We untap. Draw Expedition Map. So play Power Plant. Play Karn, Great Creator. Uh, wish. And so he's probably not surviving to next turn. Though they did use up a Lightning Bolt, so maybe he does. Um, I think my best bet in this circumstance is to just go for coding, even though it's really bad if they can bolt Karn. If they can't bolt Karn, or they don't have, like, double heat for Karn, it's great. Okay, expressive iteration. Hey, Tenet of Orch, how's it going? They play a Flooded Strand, so they have a red, red card. They play Channeler. They play Bobble. They're all right. We're learning. This is a fun variant of the deck to play, and the first match I think was most indicative of why. But, um, okay, we draw Force. I mean, Force is pretty good, I think. So, play Coding, and we'll open Island. Um, do I need to play out map? I suppose there's no reason not to at this point. Pass the turn. Okay. Opponent draws. If they tap that island for any reason, we can force. Though at this point, they're going to have a little bit of difficulty getting an artifact in the grave, so they're not going to be able to just deal with Karn unless they have burn spells. Okay, so they dash Raghavan. They can attack Karn for three, but, like, he's still around. They don't let that go. They don't have a treasure. Blood Moon is hurting them more, which is why I don't want to just immediately cast force. I can kill Moon with with force by itself i don't need to coating the the moon um all right we untap we draw mine that's actually super good so play mine blow up their other island play golos i mean like if opponent yeah opponent just mooned themselves to death <laughs> all right it's a match win uh and i think after a round one loss so all right um yeah, we're here to play Chancellor, even if Chancellor is really bad against our opponent's deck because they just throw a, like a, a bauble straight into the grave with it. Um, yeah, this is a mulligan. This is a keep, though. We will be keeping this one. And I'm going to put back Forest. All right, see what our opponent does. They play Bobble. Bobble themselves. Yeah, a lot of people a lot of people are like, oh, it's it's Tron, like, I, I gotta play Blood Moon. Like, but if you don't have a clock... You, you need you do need to do something other than play Blood Moon, right? So play Chromatic Sphere, pass the turn. I wouldn't. Somebody suggested I would Jakar Umbra. Okay, there goes our Yavi Maya. So we're not gonna have a Yavi Maya. When it plays a Scalding Tarn, we untap, draw Expedition Map, Sack Sphere for green. We draw Mine. So Ancient Stirrings. Animate the Enchantment and play a Kill Spell on it. It's super convoluted. Um, I guess we take Karn Liberated. I don't think I'm going to need a Redundant Tower. So, play Mine, play Map. And the reason that I did this in this order is because I'm kind of hoping they're going to counter Map and then not have a counter spell. I mean, if this is an Archmage's Charm, that worked out really well for us. Mystical Dispute. Oh no! How will I assemble Tron? I mean, if they've got Blood Boon, then this is, this is a completely reasonable line for our opponent to have taken. Um... 
even if they do have to play the Blood Moon off a Ragavan token. Exile Ugin. Yes, overzealous Blood Mooning is a great way to, to lose. Uh, opponent considers, plays a Spire Bluff Canal, and plays a Magus. All right, so there's going to be a little bit of a problem for us. Uh, play Tower, play Sphere, Sack Sphere for green, we draw Worm Coil, play Sphere, Sack Sphere for green, we draw Star, play Star. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Well, the thing is, when you have a Moon effect and you have Ragavan out, your mana is fixed. You don't have to worry about it. So, like, if they have a counter spell to back all this up, we are in trouble. Because I need to cast something to try and get out of this. And if I can't resolve spells under a Blood Moon, then I'm in trouble. So it looks like our opponent's playing a Murktide. Yep. Okay. If that's the case, then I think we're dead. Uh, we draw a Chancellor. Yeah, there's, just, there's nothing I can do to get rid of this Magus of the Moon. Um, I think in the ideal circumstance, what this is probably taking the place of is like an Oblivion Stone. So if I had an Oblivion Stone, I might be able to do something. I guess if I filter into Force... No, never mind. Force doesn't hit creatures, duh. Um, sack for green, see what we draw. Map. Map doesn't do it. So, um, play Karn. The other problem is, like, I could maybe get out of this with, like, an Ensnaring Bridge, but I can't empty my hand, so Ensnaring Bridge is not good. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and scoop. There's, there's nothing we can grab. So we two and three, we get half our entry back. Um, even though this 5 would lately... I mean, I, I don't think that playing Chancellor is the right thing to do. Uh, I don't think the metagame is fast enough to necessitate you playing Chancellor of the Annex in a Tron deck. Um, I think it's a little bit silly. It's fun. I love Chancellor of the Annex. But um, there's just there's just too many incidental non-bows with it. So, like, it's a problem with Ensnaring Bridge. It's a problem with, um, like, not being able to cast it. Like, it's better off as a Worm Coil or a Golos most of the time. Like, if you actually wanted to, to play, like, a Golos deck, I actually think Chromatic Orrery is not that bad. Um, but if I was going to cut these Chancellors and just play anything else, I'd play probably the fourth Golos, at least a second Worm Coil, um, probably, like, another Ulamog, and then another threat, maybe. Like, there's no... There's nothing that, like, necessitates you play this card, and it's not the best threat on its own. Um... It does stop your opponent from just snowballing out of control if you have it in your opener, but, like, we're not even playing Serum Powder, so there's not, like, a bunch of ways we can manipulate our opening hand to, like, guarantee that we have this. And a lot of our best Tron hands are hands of five and hands of four, which you will always put this card back if that's the case. You will never keep a hand of four unless it's, like, land, land, Tron tutor threat. Like, you're never going to keep a hand of four like that with a Chancellor in it, ever. So... It, it does make our mulligans a lot worse, and one of the things that's best about Tron is the fact that it does have really insanely good mulligans. Um, I actually kind of like Chromatic Orrery and Filigree Sages. I think it's kind of a silly combo. The fact that you can just draw infinite cards with Filigree Sages and Chromatic Orrery, like, you know, it, you need to win the game on the spot. Well, then you can, like, play Karn, tutor Filigree Sages, untap your Chromatic Orrery a billion times, and then draw your whole deck, exile all your opponent's lands and permanents, and, you know... Like, that's kind of cool. I don't think it's necessarily better than the primary Tron game plan, but it is interesting, and that at least wins the game on the spot. And Chromatic Orrery does have a little bit of the, like, well, you can at least play around, or you can play through a Blood Moon with it. Golos helps versus uh, Blood Moon as well. And, um, yeah. The only other thing that I want to say about this list is this list is very light on green spells, which means pitching force is very, very difficult. If I was going to play this list, I probably would not play three Force of Vigors. I would definitely, uh, I think, cut some cards out of the sideboard and make some space for, like, a couple of Wilts alongside the Force of Vigors. But I probably would not be playing three. Um, but yeah. that's uh, This is all I was planning on doing today, so... Um, if you guys haven't yet and you want to see more Tron content, you want to see more silly meme content, please, 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 if you're watching this on YouTube later, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined, and remember you can follow here on Twitch. Um, I stream Sundays, maybe not next... Let me see, let me look at the calendar really quick, because um, I will be streaming next Sunday, the Sunday after, and then probably not on the first, because that's when I'm starting to move, so I... I'm not going to be here. Um, God, crazy to think I'm moving in two weeks. Cross country, no less. But 
uh, anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I think you're all wonderful human beings, and I will see you guys next time. So, time to roll credits. Thank you.